So just as people join, I'll start. Um, Marianne had asked a question about, um, do we have an example of what event organizer looks like? And um, I mentioned that not quite yet. We do have a demo site, you know, demo.tadpole.cc. Uh, but a lot of what Dana was showing today, we're going to move over, right. over there. I'll say soon, because it's as soon as we can get to it, but that'll be there. Um, and I'm trying to think if we have like any public sites we can think about. I mean, and, and in general, uh, a theming or display is depending on your, you know, what you can do, it can kind of look any way you want to. And that's yeah. the one thing I didn't show is uh, you can have custom events and Civi can have custom fields and those events can be mapped to the by event type, right? So those events can be mapped to the event in, in WordPress and so those custom fields can also display on um, the event itself, uh, yep. the single the event, the single view of the event, not the archive. Well, both actually, if you wanted to, but right. Um, so well, you can, me, um, yeah. Let me ask you this question. I, I see somebody there asked a question about um, uh, the word press theme and editor using Elementor, and it's got some issues with the contribution page. We're in the in the midst of um, redoing our website, and so I, I kind of had the same question because our web developers using Divi Builder uh, as the um, editor and you know we uh, we're going to integrate with WordPress with the new uh, you know website but what is what is the advantage of actually doing that so if this individual has a problem with the contribution pages in Elementor I mean what is the advantage actually of taking your website and integrating with um, Word, uh, you know, Civi CRM because you can run them independently. Well, True. so this is my very, my very biased in my opinion. You should know that front. Um, <laughs> they're very specific, <laughs> but um, so WordPress is for content and Civi is for contacts, right? So just in right. Like, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do contact management and WordPress out of the box because it's just not made for that, right? It's made as a content management system. Um, and so Civi is this more, way more robust than like five times the size of WordPress or something like that, um, that you can just do a lot more things and kind of have like a, a history of a, a, what, a, what a contact does with your organization in a way that you wouldn't be able to, or it'd be a lot more of a heavy lift if you did it in WordPress alone. Um, so that in terms of, uh, themes, that's, you know, a blessing and a curse of WordPress. <laughs> um, we have been using the Astra, Astra, whatever it's called, theme uh, for the last year, year and a half, because uh, it, it, it works, it gives you a lot of flexibility and functionality without, uh, we're using built-in core features. Uh, so using, you know, post types and menus and widgets and things that are just like core to WordPress that when, it, when you upgrade or whatnot, you won't really, like it won't really affect your website and negatively you won't lose things if you remove the page builder and so on. Um, so if you can stick to something without a page builder, that would be ideal. I understand that having a page builder makes things easier and Kevin will tell you that I'm constantly nagging him <laughs> and us to figure out how can we make this easier for our clients. Um, mm -hmm. So. And I think yeah. that, and I do, and I do think that you know Divi and Elementor have their place, but as the block editor or Gutenberg and WordPress has advanced um, to the to where we are today, there's less and less reason for it. Um, you know, Divi people, I find people use Divi because then you can create a page any way you like. I find that Gutenberg um, or the new block editor is pretty much there, and to Ping's question about Elementor and issues with the contribution page. Yeah, it can because right now Civi is, we're using a short code to output the um, content and we're using the Civi markup inside of another page builder and that can always get odd. Mm. Um, so what we're basically doing for our clients is moving them to a theme like Astra or Astra. I don't know how to pronounce it either. Sorry, it's uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. And then <laughs> integrating with the Caldera forms because now we've got a native WordPress form builder 
So when it does go into a page or even into a page builder, um, it works the way you would expect. Um, so that's the way we're going. Um, so to me, that, that's just the great path forward. We are also continuing to test um, one, the, the developer who developed the Caldera Civi CRM integration um, is also, we're pretty close to um, Civi CRM blocks. So if you've used the block editor, there's you know, a prototype of the Civi CRM blocks. I forgot to include that today, which I was supposed to. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. I've got it on my screen. I wanted to see. It's, you know, it's, it's a nice way to integrate the content and it'll be a really good addition, um, which will probably just be a um, add-on plugin at first because to include it in the core software, then we have to do a lot of testing about who has what version and what editors enabled and all this stuff that it's going to be problematic. But, but I guess in, just to add to that, in general, if you can stick to core WordPress and core Civi, you know, it's just that that's enough of a headache uh, yeah. in integrating and talking to each other that if you add another layer on top of it, you're just like, it's just another layer of complexity. So we try to keep it as close to core as possible. Um, and there might be custom plugins from time to time, but uh, we try to stay away from which page builder, which, you know, because then that's just... So, I, so let me, I'm not sure I understand. Um, so as you know, our web developer is, you know, now using uh, Divi building. This project has been going on for a while. So yeah. kind of before the, the Gutenberg thing came along. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and I haven't integrated yet. So if like this other individual is saying Elementor has created issues with the contribution pages and the like, why would I want to integrate at this point if a brand new website I'm coming out with has already been kind of developed or using that that editor. Hmm, that's a great question. Are, I, one mean, other thing, I mean, it, I think both with Divi and with Elementor, you can create a page that doesn't use their builders. Mm -hmm. You could just use a default page, use, mm -hmm. use the WordPress page, just tell yeah. Divi to turn off for that page. Tell element, element or not to be used for that page. I'd look at that. Um, the reason but, that we go on. But, but what does the integration actually buy me? I can run the website as a WordPress website and I can, you know, continue to use Civi just like I'm doing now for donations. What does the integration buy me? That's what I don't understand. I mean, if we're talking just like a membership form, a donation form, um, it just, I guess what I find is that it looks more like my website. Whenever, oh. whenever I use a native Civi form, mm. I, it either looks different or I have to do a lot of styling to yeah. make it look correct. Okay. And if I, can, if I can use a Caldera form or some other integration, it out of the box is really pretty close to done as far as integrating with my website, okay. the look that, and that feel. I kind of thought that when we originally started going down this, but just, you know, kind of as this individual asked that question about the editor, it, it kind of popped mm -hmm. back into my mind. One of the things Dana was talking about at the end with the ACF integration and the way that we can actually pull um, content t contact types, such as uh, example members, that'll give us a way to build a member directory that will not use the um, Civi profiles to do so. The big advantage to that, because Civi's got all that already built in, is now we can actually choose the fields we want to show and we can style them to look like our website, which is pretty much what Views does for the people on Drupal. So it's our way of how do we get content, content or contacts from Civi into WordPress so that we can display them the way we want to. So a lot of it is about the display. And then it just opens up uh, who can you quote unquote use it, right? Because if you know how to uh, use a theme or develop this and do things in WordPress, you don't have to uh, learn as much about Civi if you work with somebody like us or somebody that knows that to, in, to do the basics and then you, that person can do that. Uh, right. a, a little easier. I mean, you still want to be a bit cautious because of uh, code conflicts, but, um, mm -hmm. but it just opens the door to who can kind of do things a little more okay. now. Were there other questions uh, before? Yeah, there's a, 
King has a question about do you use a separate database for the CMS and CIVI? Um, I do on just about all sites. Um, I do it more for convenience so that if I, when I'm doing backups and restores that they're separate. I don't know that there's that much of a performance difference in having it in two different databases. I've really not found an appreciable one, but I tend to do that. Marco's got a question now. Which calendar plugin are you using for displaying the iCal event feed? Dana, what do you? Well, are we talking, what kind of events? This is like the public event pacing events. Is that what you're talking about? Um, I mean, event organizer has, you can look at the documentation. If you're, if you're using that integration, it has the, it's, you know, you put something appends at the end or there's a short code that you can include that has, uh, you know, the, there's web, there's three kind of feeds, uh, Google Cal, Web Cal, iCal, I think. Um, and so you can just include that somewhere on your website. Uh, mm -hmm. Civi itself, um, I mean, that, that extension we have, but that's more internal. I don't know, is there a way you guys do with Civi Core? Because on the events page, there is an iCal link, but, um, and then uh, Two Mice, what's his name? Um, yep. That extension. Alan. Alan, thank you. Alan Shaw. Alan's extension. Um. Mm -hmm. but yeah, if, I, if it's integrated for the front end, I would just use event organizers built in feed mm -hmm. um, option. And I, I think you can do it by category. So you can have a feed per category if you wanted to as well. I think you can, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> that one. I'll get, I'll get the link do. for you. I'll get the link. You can <laughs> put the. Hold on, get the link. Yeah, it's real. We we can't say it, but we sure can spell it. I mean, it, I think it's the most widely used theme at this point. It's you, you, can, you, you cannot include in the count the, the default themes because people never delete them from their website. <laughs> so they're just there. Or are those uh, active? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the, uh, no it's, a, it's a, what I like about the Astra theme is that if you don't want to write a line of code, it can work. Um, and it's not overwhelming or, you know, conflicts with Civi, but if you want to do a child theme and write your own code template CSS, it works as well, which has kind of been hard to find, meaning we found themes before where they're gorgeous and wonderful if you do all the code, um, or if you write code, it's like, you're like banging heads. It's like you're fighting the theme. So this kind of satisfied both Dana and myself for our needs. I think I've surprised her in that I keep pulling code out of our themes when I see a conflict, which, because, uh, <laughs> well, because you want to have the user have the control. If they have the ability to change the button colors and styles in the, in the admin, why are we going to override that in the theme? Um, they're going to get frustrated real quick and not know why their changes aren't working, which I think is what happened to Dana. That is what uh, happened to me. I was there. <laughs> so. But that's that. Um, and you know, with Gutenberg, they're, they're, the goal, and I think Kevin knows more about this, but the, is to have that kind of go front end too, right? So the block builder will, a lot of those things will be more front end this way. So it might take a few more months or a year or whatever, but that's kind of the direction yeah. it's going. I mean, if you look at the way the development goes, there's a Gutenberg plugin that adds new, new features. Sometimes it can help break your site. So I use it in testing, but um, they've already come out with, um, you know, 
the widgets being used Guten, using Gutenberg. So if you think about in your theme areas, the uh, sidebars, you can actually use Gutenberg blocks in widget areas and it works quite nicely. Um, and then there's a project underway for full site editing so that you're not just going to be able to use blocks in the content area. It will be the sidebars, the header and the footer, which is going to change themes completely. Because how can we do that? One of the things that I've played with is, um, can we actually put a city block in a sidebar for say a, you know, profile sign up list for a mailing list. And I've been able to now there's extra things we'll have to test, but by having, by using the block editor and getting the city blocks going, which I don't know, Dana, what do you think? You think we can get that done in the next 30 days? Okay. Um, we can try. That, we can try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many um, things to work on. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a big one to me. Yeah. So if no one has any other questions, how are, how are you all using WordPress and Civi? Are, are, are all of you using Civi with WordPress? Well, as I said, not yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, go ahead, Marco. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that uh, we were using uh, CV Press, uh, CV CRM with WordPress, but uh, then uh, a couple of years back, Drupal was all the rage. So we actually moved from WordPress to Drupal, and now we have uh, partners that uh, we always tell them it's better to write on Drupal. But I've, I have seen now that uh, much progress has been made uh, in the WordPress space. So <laughs> I, I'll have to re-examine um, our approach. So thank you for that. Well, I appreciate that. I must say there's like four of us, literally, maybe a few more, that are working on this. So the more the merrier, please, please come on board and help us get more WordPress integrations going. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, no. And uh, a, a final question for you, for me, uh, uh, have you hit any like uh, walls? Have you like um, uh, sometimes defaulted uh, to Drupal, back to Drupal and uh, how does that work? Well, you, you, we are exclusively WordPress, so we didn't, we never default back to anything besides WordPress. Um, so if it doesn't work, that's why we these plugins are being developed and these uh, or there's a few extensions we've created that if it's a, a core, you know, feature that we're just trying to enhance. Um, and so that's how we approach it. And then they actually the, the core team going to extensions, it was huge because that kind of separated how these features, you know, you can have these features that doesn't matter what the CMS is. Um, so that's been super helpful, I think, to improving the WordPress integration uh, in that way. But that's why we have all these plugins and we just continue, you know, if a client needs something new and we just enhance the Caldera plugin or we add, you know, the, these features just keep getting added because of new feature requests mm -hmm. uh, based on a client because we're not moving outside of WordPress. Yeah. yeah. So when we hit a wall, we tend to try to look at how to uh, better the tools we have. We had one project that needed Civi case and a very specific workflow uh, for a training program. And it was a pretty big project and they helped fund um, a lot of the improvements to the Caldera activity slash case integration and events and events. Let's not forget the event part that they did. They um, might not know that, but that's fine. That's okay. Um, because everything we do says open source. So right. There's very little, it's almost nothing that we've done that we don't then publish or release somewhere. Um, so that's the way we've solved where we're banging our head against the wall. And part and of that, that groups is- in, That groups integration too with the groups plugin because the, depending on the step you are on the application process, you were part of this group and then once the case got opened you got moved to a different group and, and so they had access to different contents and so that kind of allowed us to use a rule to say like once the case is open move into this group and then in wordpress the people the applicants can see all these different things so it was kind of yeah mm -hmm. it was pretty nifty i mean in some ways we took our lead from 
Drupal, like the groups plugin is something that we've wanted to push for a long time um, because of some of the groups integration in Drupal that I've looked at. And now I feel we've got the same thing in WordPress. Right. So, you know, because you, with a lot of our member organizations, when you're talking about they're going to give protected content to different member types, with WordPress, you could end up with, you know, 27, 28 different roles and it becomes unmanageable. But generally, you might have a lot of member types, but their permissioning is pretty much the same. Right. And we can do it through groups and give the permission they need both to the content um, and to areas of civi. So, works nicely. Yeah, uh, ju just one more question. Sorry, again. Uh, <laughs> Do you have a, like a tool for um, managing a, a fleet of sites, uh, instances, something like Egir for uh, Drupal? <laughs> and does that get hard? How, how, how does that work? Yes, yeah, so I worked, I, I played with Egir for Drupal. It's kind of nifty. Um, it's not like WordPress multi-site, because with multi-site, you do share a code base, but Egir, your really unique sites. Um, we tend to use a WordPress management tool in order to manage our client sites, you know, for maintenance and updates and the like. Um, and for Civi and their updates, we use Ansible. Okay, so that's our tool. But I don't know if we have an Agar equivalent. Dana, you can, I mean. That's you, Kevin. No, but I, I mean, live with multi sites and. <laughs> Right, and, but uh, multi-sites for related orgs, not uh, multi-site well, just for ease of update. You can do multi-network and go all crazy, but we won't go there yet. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that is the answer to Agar is that WordPress has something called multi-network where you can create a network of sites and inside each site you have different multi-sites. Right. Um, and therefore you would be in one install of WordPress with multiple networks. Correct. The best example of that is WordPress.org is a multi-network with WordPress.org, BuddyPress.org, WordCamp.org, and then all the um, uh, international sites, you know, WordPress Germany, WordPress Italy, et cetera. That's one install that they manage. So that's the biggest one that I can get into. That's my, that's the one. So. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, Ping, we do do, we can just use our, we have a help desk service so we can use that for training. Um, and Aiden, I think you had a question. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna come back on, uh, you're asking about, you know, what we're doing with WordPress and so on. And um, so I've got a few that are, that are on WordPress, um, historically been much more on the Drupal 7 side of things. And, um, and very much looking at quite which direction to go with those and not convinced by the whole Drupal 8 thing, just as Drupal 8 itself. Uh, for small orgs, it still seems pretty um, intensive in terms of its support requirement. Um, and for a lot of them, you know, WordPress is, is more appealing. Um, backdrop also looks quite interesting. Um, and so on with some of the bits there. So yeah, really looking to see you know, as I say, it's, it's, it's very basic use um, of the WordPress side of things at the moment from, from my end, but uh, looking to see quite mm -hmm. how I might do a bit more of that. Yep, that's great. Yeah, we're working on a website right now that uh, will use different content types for displaying different types of contacts on the front end, uh, which includes a couple directories um, the events uh, are very complicated and they'll have each event type will have its own custom fields and so those will be displayed on the front end uh, differently and you know style this will be, will be with a child theme and there'll be some custom code and whatnot um, and then eventually I think which I didn't want to bring up earlier but we're going to look at WooCommerce a little more and see how we get the, the WooCommerce tied in a little more um, and that will be a lot I think simpler in some senses because we have this ACF stuff done and others the other piece are already talking that we can kind of build around it yeah. uh, a little a little nicely um, mm -hmm. yeah. 
we get driven by the projects so that when we get a need, then we'll fill it. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, we're going to see, uh, my wife is on the board of a community theater and they're moving over to uh, civ using Civi and they're going to sell tickets, which is going to tie into Woo. So I'm sure that's going to get me a lot more involved in the Woo integration <laughs> um, in short order. Um, but that's a good thing because, um, you know, w you know, that could help us. Uh, earlier we were asked about payment processors and that can open up a whole nother world of payment gateways right. that are written, you know, um, because there are challenges with doing payments through just straight through the Civi API. Um, and it's, do we invest time in that or do we invest time in using what tools have already been built? And, you know, that's always a challenge to decide what the better path is. So. Have you done anything with, with Civi proxy and separating out sort of front end, back end stuff? Only in testing. Right. Only in testing. I've not, we do not have a client running that way. We have, we have one specific client who, no, their, their public forms are public forms that talk to their civvy. We have not done that. Right. There was some early work on a um, remote Caldera add-on so that you could have a caldera form on any site um, and then it could communicate with your proxy site if you will um, but that was held off on because now civi crm can and does use the wordpress rest api so in theory we'll be able to um, that should now become much more manageable because we can send all the data over the, the WordPress API and just hand it off to Civi. Rather than have it, there, was, there were always inherent issues with the Civi REST API and WordPress due to the way that um, WordPress did escaping. So international characters would get mangled. Okay. Yeah. They were double escaped, which can't be good. <laughs> no, it's like Never no, good. No, no, and every way we t went to turn it off would kind of leave an open hole, which is even worse. Uh, so, yes. yeah. worked out well. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a number of changes going through on that. Uh, that WordPress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no it, it's a, it's a for WordPress. It's a big deal because now um, now we can send out mailings and and all of the links are routed through WordPress to Civi rather than through Civi to WordPress and back to Civi again. Because it was really, when you think about like a mailing link, it would hit the Civi extern, because we're just hitting Civi alone. Civi would have to go and boot WordPress. Now we'd get all the data we need and we'd send it back to Civi. Now the link will take us straight to WordPress and they'll say, oh, you want the Civi API and just hand it straight there. It should be a lot more reliable. So on the URL, on the um, click tracking, um, and even though, and we also have the same route for IPNs. So you can actually route the IPN wrapper that way as well. Yeah. And, I, and I don't know if you've, met, if you've noticed it, but if you do a fresh install of Civi, cleaner URLs, meaning URLs in the same format as Drupal on the front end are now enabled. So there's no more query string. So that was, that's a nice feature because one of the cool things about the short codes to me was, well, I don't have to tell them page equals civi serum question mark and all that nonsense. And now you can do it both ways. You can publish on a WordPress page. You can have a clean URL. So. Yeah, it certainly seems to be quite a number of, of those sorts of um, enhancements that are coming through on the WordPress side of things and just making it. Well, I mean, when you go back to when you go back to 2012 and we start looking and Dana said that extensions were the turning point and they really were because it was more of, you know, how do we make sure that WordPress, Drupal and Joomla have the same basic features? I mean, if you're going to use web forms and views, that's Drupal specific, but 
in the inherent software, how do we make sure that Civi is really equivalent on all three platforms and let people have the choice? So that's been a constant thought of ours for years. Good. Oh. Anybody want to share questions or have what they're doing or how you're using it or anything? <laughs> or the biggest, biggest feature you wish you had? Right. What are we missing? That well, maybe one day will exist. Who knows? Don't know yet. <laughs> I had a question. Great. Um, yep. So we use WordPress to be, uh, and then we use Caldera for all of our forms. Um, the Civi relationship processor, is there a reason it doesn't have the end date and start date options? Probably because they were just never, no. Yeah. I, I mean, it, okay. you know, I find when I do trainings that I always mention like people underuse end date and start dates. And look at this, we didn't even put it in the processor. <laughs> probably because we didn't, we probably just didn't think of it at the time. Okay. Yeah, so I can have, a, it, you know, it also doesn't do, I had asked Andre about this. There's a, you can do custom fields for relationships. Relationships. Mm -hmm. But it's not in the back. Either. So. That's an enhancement. Yeah, that's the issue cue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the ways that we use it is uh, we have a, a national school registry. Uh -huh. um, and so folks will sign up. And so we end up having, you know, ser at least two contacts processor and then a relationship processor and all these kind of things. And one of the things we're trying to figure out is if there's a way to have folks select from like, you know, using the um, like Civi populate reference. So we'd be able to pull those organizational contacts that would then cue the relationship without having to fill in basically all the information to get that relationship connected. Does that make sense? Can you say it again? I think so, but can you just do one more? Yeah. So the way we have it set up now is basically using deduping for the orgs. Uh -huh. uh, so every, every year if they're registering, they had to fill in some basic information to make that dedupe work. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we're looking at, what would be nice is if they didn't have to fill in all that information for the org, which rarely ever changes. Right. Um, so like the school, they could just select their school and then select their type and it would be able to connect on the processor side. I think it does though, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm just thinking of the application form we're talking about asked for three contacts on the first form. Mm -hmm. um, and there are two of them are related contacts, right? So it's the uh, emergency contact and the yeah. uh, education contact or whatever. Um, and when they and then they have an edit form, basically they can come log in and look at it and edit it. Um, and I think those pre-populate, don't they? I thought they did, but not on a new form. You're saying, right? Well, we don't we don't pre-populate anything on the Caldera form. Like we don't have any tokens or anything that shows up. Um, no, but if you folks. do the auto complete checkbox on the contact ID one or contact one. Yeah, if they if they, it's if they're logged in, though, right? Yeah. Well, no, you can, use, uh, you, you can use the tokens or the, what's it called? The magic, magic link. What's it called? Mm. Yeah. You know, when you have the email, a unique email and the link. With uh, the checksum. Checksum. Yep. Thank you, Aiden. You can use checksums so they don't have to be logged in and then it will mm -hmm. pre-populate as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that, and I'm not sure if you're using this, but the contact reference field in Caldera, have you used that? Yeah, that's what we were we we were looking at, but that doesn't populate like a processor, does it? Based no. On what, what already exists? Yeah. Well, it but it'll, it'll let the user choose, say, their uh, organization from a predetermined list, and then you can map and send it over with the contact. Processor, right. Yeah, with the processor, um, we use that a lot. You can send it over with the relationship processor. Or just no, the that contact, the contact no, and the then con the mapping a, a, a magic tag for that field, for whatever that field is. Right. Yeah, the way we've done it is we've create like a, a custom field in Civi that will save that and basically create like the link. Um, mm -hmm. But that won't, you know, update our relationships tab. I doing think it that does. I feel like I did this, Kevin, didn't I? Do yeah, because 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 right now the. <laughs> Right, because what, 
we have done this. I have to go find a form because we have a membership organization where when you fill out the membership form, you tell it what organization you are and that creates an, a relationship. Mm -hmm. The question that I have to look, is it a custom relationship or the CIVI default? Because if we cheated and used employee, employer, no, CIVI not. does that by, mis by, by itself. We but as cheat. Dan, <laughs> I know, okay. Uh, but yeah, um, there's definitely a way to do that because in the relationship processor, you get to choose contact A, contact B. And you're right, how do we get contact B onto the form? Um, you should send us an email because you know this application itself was a bit you know complicated and it, there might have been an extension or an add-on plugin right. or something that we which right. may not be public yet i don't remember anymore um that might be doing some of the things or because i remember there was a couple things about relationships which because we needed a, re, a there's an extension for tokens that, that was built for that shows relationships for in emails yeah and then there was something with that so it's pretty, I have to go back and look, but. For the application that has the contact, the emergency contact, the um, school contact, and the in case something, you know, even worse happens contact. There's like five contacts that form relationships on this. They're all done using the Caldera relationship process. Right. But none of the contacts are chosen through a contact reference though. No, the first one, the, the, the No, the university is, right? is, you're right. And then they're a student of. So we have done this. <laughs> now I got to find out how. Okay. You know how you do something once and then time passes and you don't remember. It. It. And then you forget. And it's yeah. like, why did I not? Why did I not? Because uh, I'll always remember, of course. I'm trying to get away with that. I'm trying to keep better notes. So yeah, we've done that. How did you do it? Um, I honestly don't remember. That's really a bad answer. It may be the truth. It, yeah, it's a real answer. <laughs> my, uh, my, my supervisor really ran our Drupal site. And so when mm -hmm. we switched over to WordPress, he, he's like, we used to be able to do this. Why can't we do this? And I'm like, sure we can. You just have to like rewire it a little bit. All right. Yep. Now you got me looking to see if I can find it quick. So to answer, Ping has a question about uh, multiple payment processors and PayPal and Stripe at the same time. And this is just on Civi forms. Um, yes, you can have multiple payment processors active. And then uh, when you create the contribution page or the event page or whatnot, you can check off what ones you want to include on that page. Um, and then they can select on, on when they're paying. This is all Civi itself, not outside of Civi at the moment. Yep. Um, All right. But yes, that is possible. Yep. And then the, the name of the of the payment processor just has to be different. You call it PayPal, and you call it Stripe, or you call it credit card. This, they can't have the same label. Right. But yeah. Right. Did you find it, Kevin? Of course I did, because I have a. <laughs> so what we did on this one is for the organization, we mapped that to contact two. And since it will already exist because you're choosing it as a contact reference by ID, it automatically updates. It, it, it just doesn't create a new contact. And then in the relationship, we created a university student relationship, you know, my college. And we mapped contact one to contact two. And we really didn't enter the data for contact two. They chose it from a list. Right. So. I knew we had done it. Yeah, no, it's still no. so easy. <laughs> well, and it, it is once you know the answer because, and that's really the key is because when you're on a contact reference field, we know the contact, what, who the contact is down to their ID. So when we send the data over, we're not changing the data. We're just saying, oh, we already have this. Okay, let's move on. And then we create the relationship between the org and the individual and boom, right. and it's a custom relationship. And I know when they come back and edit the form logged in and or use the whatever I forgot. It's already again, there. That it, it, it all repopulates. Absolutely. Uh, yep, that's why you can spend go. like five hours on Caldera integration. Like yeah, let me close this page down before I break so something. Much you can do. Mm -hmm. no. But that is a good point about start and end date. 
which I think just a uh, custom field, all of it just goes boom, boom, boom. Um. I'm just trying to think, oh, I get it. So we could, like in, in my university example, we could put the start date or relationship of the date they entered the university and the end date, their expected graduation date. Right. Yeah, and that's what, that's how we use it. Um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, wow, I could do that. Um, yeah, that could actually be useful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and to ping, I'll put it here. The yeah. best place to start um, is get on chat.civicrm.org. And then um, as far as starting to work on it, um, lab.civicrm.org org is basically all of the open issues and then the code is over on github um, uh, actually I know this URL I can just type it um, and you can take a look at the PR cues for um, you know the core repo the WordPress repo etc um, we always could use people to test things to see if they work um, and chime in on the chat and contribute to the issues. Um, that's a great way to get started. People are really friendly in the chat. So if you have questions, ask. You know, there's, I wouldn't say there's always somebody there, but if you ask a question, just about all the time, someone will get back to you asynchronously, but, you know. I was like, I know there's a page here, this page. Uh, oh, there's a real like, Yeah. get involved. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> there we go. That's great. But yeah, we're happy to have uh, more people involved. There's a WordPress channel, so you can join that one. Mm -hmm. Pastor Kevin. Pastor all of us. <laughs> Pastor all of us. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that the, how uh, Caldera is being used. That's exciting. Yeah. I always wonder, like, how is it being used? Who's using it? Where is it? I don't know. Yeah, we're using it all over. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I like it. I, I really have liked what it's done. I spent a long time pushing tall words on the gravity forms path, but it wasn't a good fit for Civi. And now this is just, this works real well. Thank you all so much. All yeah. right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for your time. Us. Yeah. Uh, see you online and then, uh, yeah. Yep. Get yep. in touch if you need anything. We're around. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining, Aiden. Been, been very useful. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Pink, thank you for joining. All right.